Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my booktube channel about books, reading and stuff. I've just finished reading A Confederacy of Dunces. Uh, I can't hold up the book because I read it on Kindle on this tablet here. A Confederacy of Dunces came onto my radar when it was talked about by Rowan at We Damage We and Greg at Another Bibliophile Reads. It's one of their favourite books. A Confederacy of Dunces is a picaresque novel. We have a central character, Ignatius J. Riley, who's perhaps one of the most foul and offensive protagonists in the history of literature. He's an overweight man-child. He's studied medieval history and now he's, in, he's 30, but he's living at home with his mother a parasitic existence. He thinks he's better than everybody else. I mingle with my peers or with no one, he suggests. But as I have no peers, then I mingle with no one. When I asked on my community tag which of the eight books on my June TBR I should read, The Confederacy of Dances was the one most recommended. The title A Confederacy of Dunces comes from a quote by Jonathan Swift. When a true genius appears in the world, you may know him by this sign, that the dunces are in confederacy against him. This book shows the absurdity of humanity, especially when it tries to take itself too seriously. It's set in New Orleans, mostly in the French Quarter where there's a CD dive called The Night of Joy, where Ignatius and his mother find themselves at the beginning of the story when they're trying to escape from Patrolman Manusco. There's lots of colourful characters in this story and colourful settings. And all the characters are interconnected. John Kennedy Toole spent two years trying to get this work published and he failed. And he committed suicide in 1969 by putting a garden hose on the exhaust pipe of his car and putting the hose in the window. After his death, John Kennedy Toole's mother Thelma found the manuscript and badgered a writer, Walker Percy, to take a look at it, which he did. And they found a publisher eventually and when it was published it became a cult classic. And in 1981, it won the Pulitzer Prize 12 years after the author had died. I can see why people really love this novel. It's one of those novels like Catch-22 or Slaughterhouse-Five that touches a real sweet spot with some readers. For me, I would give it four stars. I enjoyed it, but it's not one of the best books for me of this year. It's a very funny book and it's also quite a tragic book as well. Uh, there's lots of funny lines. Uh, Jones, who's sweeping up at a night of joy, complains about the slave wages. He says, she ain't exactly hire me. She kind of buying me off the auction block. Some lines are highlighted from the novel. Ignatius talking about his political views. He says, when what I want is a good strong monarchy with a tasteful and decent king who has some knowledge of theology and geometry. Ignatius is often talking about this theology and geometry. I'm not quite sure what he wants. He was disillusioned with the Catholic Church when they refused to give the last rites and burial of his dog. He also says, I recommend Batman, especially for he tends to transcend the abysmal society in which he has found himself. His morality is rather rigid. Also, I rather respect Batman. Like with any picaresque novel, the central character doesn't really change throughout the novel, but other characters around him changes. His mother begins to get disillusioned with him. Personally, I'm kind of getting fed up on Ignatius, even if he is my own child, she says at one point. And she's continually nagging him to go out and get a job. And then when he gets a lowly job, she laments that 
he had all that education and he's pushing around a hot dog stand or he's doing a lowly job in Levi pants. If you like this video you can like and subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video.